Uh, okay, uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are. First, I'd like to thank uh, Hide uh, Kurobayashi and uh, Sanavo san uh, uh, of organizing this uh, special uh, conference under these uh, very special circumstances. So, I uh, would like to talk about the interface mechanism and schemia, particularly with related to the to uh, heterostructure. And this work uh, consists of uh, many of my students here working with uh, with uh, FGT and the topological initiators and the simulation. In particular, I have colleagues, uh, uh, Xi Jinjiang from Kaust, uh, who worked at, uh, with uh, Lawrence TM and Alex Brother on the uh, on, uh, neutron scattering. So, as you all know, as you all know, let me see uh, before. It's going here, let me see. Uh, sorry, I apologize that. Uh, okay, here, uh, in, in this difficult time, I saw the shortest spring, and this is the, uh, the, the front end spin of UCLA, but underneath, of course, there's a very nice quote from uh, an ancient Chinese uh, philosopher, says thousand miles of journey must begin at the bound for steps. So as often, our work's always among the few steps only. So, the interface, as you all know, plays a, a critical role, in particular with the 2D inclusive of the topological insulator with the FM and, and, and uh, AFM, et cetera, also with the superconductor. In particular, when the from this uh, SOC, the spin optic coupling comes in, then we have many interactions causing, of course, you all know, uh, spin hull and uh, rush bar, et cetera. And because of it, the whole bunch of the possibility of the voltage control and uh, the proximity of this proximity effect come out with, of course, by the exchange, by the other thing, Maria interaction, DMI, resulting what you heard a lot about the Skirmian work, beautiful Skirmian work that passed by uh, Dr. Wu. And of course, uh, they're also possible resulting to a new effect of the axion by the E dot H term of uh, Lagrangian and possibly, possibly other topological superconductor, etc. In the interest of time, I will be most talking about exchange interaction to possibly uh, Skirmian or buffers in, in that case. So, uh, as you all know, topological insulator, we are growing most of this uh, related compound here. There are 2D type of the uh, uh, Van der Waals uh, materials. And we typically use this material to minimize the bulk factor to, to, uh, uh, to make the surface conduction dominates uh, in this case. A whole bunch of review papers and uh, available for topological insulator uh, briefly, briefly, different from regular insulator or semiconductor is that in, in the semiconductor, you have valence band conduction band and spin open coupling. When one increases the, the spin open coupling by introducing heavy elements, uh, the valence band push over and invert the band itself. When that happens, you form the direct cone at, cent uh, at, right cent at the center uh, of the of zone edge here. And then you have the, the uh, spin, op spin momentum lock, as often known. Now, when you integrate the, the, this complex and manifold, of course, singularity happens uh, because of intersection here, then resulting so-called chain numbers, and as shown over here, and uh, the different chain number because of the uh, of the of this topological change over here, it has been shown by Aquas and many others that indeed this uh, is a very beautiful physics for exploration. So we use this material first to interface with the anti-ferromagnetic to look at the exchange coupling. Uh, if we introduce comb dope of this. Uh, uh, this FBS, I call BST now, uh, bismuth antimony terrorite of the topological initiator. It has a curie temperature of roughly 30 degrees Kelvin. Then we choose this chromium antimony as AFM, which has a perpendicular near order, near order. And we pick this because we can grow in the same chamber uh, without uh, interface issue. This is to minimize the interface uh, uh, effect over here. Oops, sorry. Uh, Okay, to, uh, and so 
uh, and also a lot is quite quite much over over here as well. And so uh, the air temperature is quite high, 700 degrees Kelvin, etc. Now, when that happens, so the TEM shows up very nicely as anticipated. And uh, if you look at the top there of uh, chrome antimony over BST, then we've seen the exchange bias, as you heard a lot about the uh, positive uh, field bias and negative field bias, you've seen that field bias. And that can be explained very easy, conveniently or easily by this exchange coupling to the, the uh, AFM here through this, uh, uh, this condition as you trace down from one to two to three and four, et cetera, over here. So we've shown that is clear and that's not a surprising uh, and, and, and exchange bias persists up to about 35 degrees Kelvin or so. So now if you grow another layer on top, then what happens? Well, it turns out it becomes like uh, you, you can switch from two layer from a ferromagnetic by layer to anti-ferromagnetic and to uh, another, uh, to the ferro again and back and forth. And this could be, uh, could be explained couple, uh, the, this, the, the uh, AFM coupling through this uh, long range coupling through the AFM here, which is uh, substantially thin in this case here. And you can see from trace from one to two and uh, two, three and back here shows that indeed uh, that's uh, uh, the, the case over here. And so uh, you see, uh, the, 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 the exchange coupling couple through and seems to indicate that, that you do have this coupling effect here. So what is, uh, uh, this seems to be reasonable and the neutron scattering by other squatters show that in for, for if you look at the so-called scattering length density, which really the scattering of the neutron coming in from uranium neutrons and scatter from the, the spin at which you put an implant here by apply the magnetic field. Normally that's how it's done. And you see the scattering normally from chromium uh, doped to TI, but also from, from antimony, which is AFM, suggesting that you do have the some magnetic coupling here. But the other detailed studies show that the inter, interface mixing cannot really explain our observation here. There must be some kind of effect at that interface effect through the some interaction over here. Now we have substantiated this study by looking at the number of layers. So instead of a one uh, three layer stack, as I showed you previously, I increased the number of the layers up to 10 and we determine the Curie temperature by arrow spot and show the Curie temperature actually increase all the way to 30 uh, degree Kelvin from 30, from 30 degree to 90 degree Kelvin at three times increases. And uh, this increase is, is clearly, and further we shown that the coercive field uh, increase also by 100 times increasing number of there from one to all the way to 10 layers over here. Now, you may argue that this increase could be due to the fact that you increase total material of MTI, the magnetic dope TI here, but that's not the case as we demonstrate here by increasing the thickness of a single layer and all the way up to 50 nanometer, the coercive phase force uh, or coercive field remains unchanged in this case here. Show that indeed the interface play very interesting, important role. So then we say, okay, why don't we look at the different kinds of layer order? There's the implant type of layer order, I see. So here, the, the, the spin texture will be the implant as I shown over here. On, and again, we pick the magnet steroid because we can grow in situ with MB and show the interface uh, nicely and not without much, without much of the, uh, the mixture here. The layer temperature, determined by neutron diffraction is shown the, at, uh, at, uh, at the, on this particular uh, peak here or the one, one or all peak here, show that the near temperature is roughly about 307, as you can see from here, uh, about 300 degrees uh, Kelvin or so. And, and this, uh, this, we use this material because the near temperature is near room temperature. So we could actually feel cool above the near temperature to freeze out interface spin if possible. That's what we try to do. And so that's what we try. And the, the model, you can see that, that, of course, there are some small amount of defect in magnet uh, terrorite, which may result some kind of residual spin. And uh, 
but the most of it coming from interface by by uh, applying uh, the uh, by applying field cool here in this case. And then as you mentioned that the BST uh, prefer to be perpendicular and a shorter P here. So the coupling is very interesting to produce in this case for skirmia. And we look at the the uh, the, the uh, anomalous hall, you can see that uh, we come from hall to all the way to about below 15 degree K. You've seen some of the uh, the uh, so-called topological hall or geometrical hall effect shown over here. And, and so we can explain this by a field cool uh, from one uh, to, to back to two here and then back to, uh, to, to the positive field shown over here, the creation and then back trace again, show the creation of the skirmion with positive charge with a negative charge over here. So in, indeed, we think that if you feel cool about the air temperature, seem to be able to change this uh, uh, topological charge. And this can be evaluated by subtracting the ordinary hall and anomalous hall get the, um, the, the, uh, the, the significant the geometrical or we call topological hall effect that uh, that Sefong uh, Wu talking about in uh, the last talk. Now uh, we could we have we can do some we have done some LLG simulation showing that with uh, stochastic distribution of the pinning defect by scanning field back and forth we do see the positive charge gamma and the negative charge gamma if the if it's a, it's a, uh, the the residual defect is pointing to the z positive z direction and vice versa can we do that again so. Well, uh, this is a way of controlling a uh, skirmion charge. And indeed, the, the simulation on the right will show as you scan the field uh, from positive to negative direction. And you see in the positive to negative direction, you should see this uh, uh, skirmion and they call it backwards. You can see the other way around too. With the field core, which is not in simulation here, shows that you can have exchange bias. In addition, the, the, uh, the skirmion charge increases in the positive field core and compared to the reverse the negative charge direction over here. This also been, uh, been uh, pictured in the, in the zero field cool situation, uh, plot the assumption of temperature here, and show below 10 degree K also, you do have the uh, balance of the charge of the positive negative charge. In the negative the case, you will be enhanced in the, in the one side, and of course the positive will be the other way around. So uh, uh, we look at the interface effect by, again, by, uh, by neutron scattering, looking at the scattering uh, cross-section, which is called scattering length density. And that uh, shows that it, it, indeed you have the, uh, the, the sort of propagating the magnetic signal picked up to the, uh, to this, to the uh, AFM position and uh, locations. And this could be, uh, could be, could the question could it be due to the interface arrowing or a combination of two? It turns out the uh, in the case of by capping this uh, BST onto AFM, we see there's no major difference from the X-ray from the XMCD and from the XMLD, and shows that there's no significant difference. So we believe we believe this uh, there's really not the the, the the interfacing uh, sort of mixing effect here. So uh, moving forward, uh, so we look at another kinds of FN structure. In this case, again, we look at the uh, chromium selenide. Again, we can grow this uh, on top of M the MB chambers in the interface on gallium arsenide, and we can grow M M uh, M the magnetic doped. Uh, TI on top of, of the surface of here. And this magnetic structure of AFM structure rather, uh, if you have the chromium, it looks like an umbrella structure and, and the anti ferro coupled down to the second layer down below here. And the interface shows also pretty decent in terms of the intermixing and, and it goes temperature, roughly uh, relatively low temperatures, about 200 some ish temperature. Uh, okay, so the uh, look at uh, on the uh, polar, uh, polarized the neutron refractometry again, and you see there's almost uh, this is the FM film only, and look at the bottom chart here. 
you only work as the magnetic spin in the in the surface only, and that could be due to interface defect, as I mentioned previously. <coughs> then also uh, with the TI uh, and the bottom here shown the clearly magnetic uh, signal, but there's no significant. Uh, uh, signal in the chrome solenoid. So uh, that's so we look at the carefully more of the of, of the uh, transport. And interestingly, as you see here, if the chrome and solenoid is on top of the BST, you see at the temperature uh, of you see this uh, uh, magnetic uh, effect wire uh, in, in the chrome solenoid in the bottom. That we call bottom layer now. Uh, there's uh, nothing uh, to show that. And then we say, okay, how about three layer? Well, three layer turns out is quite similar to to the first case here. Uh, uh, that I call that uh, uh, top case here. So uh, in fact, that uh, these two are identical except this expanded scale, etc. So the question is, uh, why this is the case? Well, we've been further uh, by XMCD. And so we look at chrome L3, uh, the, the X-ray absorption peak, and this is the XMCD down below. Compare with the top there, top there meaning chrome somewhere on top, the signal of XMCD shows a much larger in L, L3 and L2 over here. Now, if we look concentrated on this particular peak here and expand it uh, to shown over here, uh, carefully here, and looking for the top layer and bottom layer, you've seen the edge near here, suggesting this is very close to chrome three uh, uh, variance and consistent with the Figueroa's earlier report of his data shown down below, chrome two, uh, chrome three, uh, and the L three peak here shows the the, uh, the the different variance over here, and this uh, should not be complicated. Uh, should not be uh, interpreted from the uh, as of the terrarium case, because terrarium signal is very weak. We mag magnify 20 times still a, a little peak here, but it should not be bothering this uh, one. So suggesting that magnetic coupling is come from chrome two to chrome three through some kind of a double exchange coupling over here. So we're looking more carefully about the antimony uh, M5 and an antimony M5, again, the top, the top structure, the chrome, Solenoid on top uh, shows up the XMCD here. What it suggests then for looking carefully here is that uh, if you have uh, at, at the top surface seems to have the antimony, uh, this antimony here uh, magnetized by by sort of chrome uh, interface chrome here when they set on top of uh, terrarium in this case, and and this. Uh, this uh, is explained as following here. Somehow it det det uh, it determine it depends on the what kind of surface termination the surface the surface termination are substantially different here. Uh, this will be uh, terrarium uh, a chromium onto onto terrarium here, and this will be different. So uh, this has to be done with a DFT. Our, without going to detail, my, one of my colleagues uh, come up with uh, this, by the way, there's no major interface effect here. With a DFT calculation, show that anti, uh, the ferromagnetic coupling is possible when, when it's with a chromium. By the way, this top view, this is a side view here. This is the chromium, uh, the, the, the chromium set on top of terrarium. Uh, this is side view over here, and that seems to be giving minimized energy for for FM coupling. And that we have, I have a discussion with uh, Carlo Canani of Sweden. Uh, he worked on chromium and timonite, and it's quite consistent with the chrome solenoid in this in this case over here. So, so lastly, but not least, that uh, I uh, want to thank the, uh, Dr. Wu for for the detail about the the FGT uh, and the Van der Waals structure to look at the uh, skirmion structure. We actually did a similar thing. This is done, done different from the MBE work. This is done by peeling similar to what he had described. And in this case, we have a tungsten terrorite coupling to that with hope that this is a strongly, strongly uh, SOC so that we will be able to, to see the skirmion. And we prepare a thin film and thick a thin film rather and, and compare with a thick film. Now, from the transport study, we do see 
the uh, topological uh, type of uh, uh, power effect over here below certain temperature in the thin film around about 50 in the thicker film around below about 150 or so. And this is uh, shown the structure by the way thin film is more like a, a, a semiconducting or insulating and it's more metallic like. So we look at the, uh, as I explained detail uh, by uh, Dr. Wu, uh, Sejong, Sejong Wu, that he showed that uh, with, the, with the nail type of uh, skirmian, that uh, you need to tilt your, your sample axis by 30 degrees and from the over forecast to, to sort of under forecast, and you will see the contrast from bright dark here to dark, uh, dark, and, and bright down below. So you do see that contrast coming, a change of, of that and suggesting it's possibly near type of structure of skirmion te texture. Now, we, uh, we, the other material seems to be possible that, uh, that uh, uh, we are working and other people are working on. Now, this skirmion size, by the way, I should say that uh, is about 90, uh, at the night, at about 150 at the 90 degree Kelvin or so, or 80 nanometer, 190, uh, about close 200 degree uh, K or so, and and and, and we we try to figure out uh, uh, what uh, would be the DMI. In fact, that uh, we look at the again look at thicker film of uh, of this particular structure uh, by adjusting the field, we can get. Uh, the, the stripe type of domain, and from this domain, by the way, this is also from under to over forecasting, from domain width, we can estimate the DMI, and the DMI is roughly in the order of, uh, of uh, about one uh, miniature per meter square. Now, you look at the, the size uh, for Lorentz TM, we see roughly a different film, a 30 up to 40, roughly about 190, uh, uh, at a 190 degree Kelvin uh, or so, the size is roughly about 80, 80 nanometer. We also from try to extrapolate just for the, for the heck of it, from this uh, anomal, uh, anomalous hull, uh, or I call topological hull peak, you can estimate the skirmion size and, and that roughly about 50 at the relatively low temperature of the thin film. And if I will actually try to do it, also a thick film, it come up 150. So they're comparable to, to the uh, Lorentz TEM. Now you could argue that uh, we, why don't we look at the thin film by Lorentz TEM. Turns out we couldn't do it because we, we tried to get contrast that, or as uh, Zhang Zhang tried to get contrast, uh, the film just get uh, burned. Uh, we could never get successful uh, contrast down to the to the thin film region over here. So uh, that's remain to be explored. And uh, so we have done some some simulation by looking for this particular structure with uh, tungsten terra on top with uh, with uh, FGT in the bottom of different thickness. And from uh, uh, we we think there is a structure coming to it to the bulk and indeed show the uh, structure going down in depth here by simulation. And this probably is similar to what uh, uh, people have done, both theory proposed by, uh, by the Kisov group uh, 2015, that that would be a, a spin texture, which is not quite squirmy on the surface, but also have an in-depth of a chiral a structure on the, on the, in the depth here. Experimentally, that in the bulk uh, F, uh, ion germanium, uh, people also shown that is indeed the case by Ka Kawarami's group, as well as uh, by F Giant's group show have this kind of structure. And those are remain to be uh, further explored. So in short, uh, I like to uh, say that uh, we, st we study the proximity effect on the 2D, particularly on a topological insulator on FM, and show that you have interface uh, coupling and exchange, enhanced exchange magnetism through the, some kind of uh, relatively long range exchange coupling. And there are area of the topological phase coupling by interface to a TI, which uh, I would, uh, I did not, I skipped that. And uh, in the interest of time, and uh, that's uh, another subject matter of very uh, interesting of uh, going to axion electrodynamics. 
and uh, uh, spin texture. I mentioned that you can also induce skin and texture because of the MI of the TI. And I begin to talk about other 2, 2D material, particular with uh, FGT, uh, intrinsic ferromagnetic material without the doping as the case I shown over the top in contrast. So uh, other perspective are looking for other topological phase coupled to spintronic material and phases and other surface such as uh, superconducting with uh, topological superconductors. And, and indeed, that uh, FN spintronic would be entirely possible. And I, I so I'd like to, again, once more, thank you all my colleagues and students, and particularly uh, Alex Quarter, uh, NIST, uh, and, and Sijin Zhang of Kaust, and also Zhao Yang Yan of, of some of the, of the SMCD work and, and uh, uh, materials supplied by, uh, by uh, Tani Guji and uh, Watanami Sang and other uh, support, uh, theoretical support by LSF also uh, appreciate very much. And thank you again, thank you very much.